Hello and welcome to Let's Play Mass Effect 3 Citadel DLC. Blind, of course. I am Recluse York, but you hopefully already knew that. And this here is Alexander Shepard. Yeah, the engineer, the guy in the green armor. Oh. And I have to say, this DLC has made me a little bit bittersweet because it is the last story based single player DLC that will come out for Mass Effect. So, for me and for you, this will be the last adventure for Commander Shepard and probably all his friends as well. Uh, of course, of course, after the DLC, I will go off and just, you know, attack Earth or take back Earth. But this is probably the last we'll see of Alexander Shepard. But even though it's bittersweet, it's really nice to go out on a high note. And I hope this DLC will be really well made. Um, I don't know much about it, but I do know that it's. It's, uh, it's probably pretty uh, character-driven, um, and uh, I also know it takes place in the Citadel, because of the name. <laughs> so, but that's about it. And uh, well, I'll probably talk more about my feelings about the Mass Effect universe and my Shepard here after I uh, I beat the beat the. Uh, the DLC. But right now, let's go off into here. This is our armor that we've been using for the most part, and I still like it. Got to love the green thingy power generator on the back. Heavily armored, like the gray flexible areas, and of course the the stripe. I refuse to change the uh, the color of the stripe because that's that's N7 for me white and red otherwise it's green and gray oh and of course my very special visor which seems fairly popular with uh, with uh, LPs these days and I'm happy because it doesn't obscure the face but still some kind of face gear and it looks awesome oh and yeah of course my casual gear is still my N7 hoodie and, oh, let's check out Tali one last time. Might be the last time ever. Hmm. She is beautiful. Oh, I'll miss you, Alexander, when all this is over. Oh. And I keep changing the pronunci pronunciation of his name. Alexander or Alexander. Either either way works. Power terminal. Email. I'm guessing I'm going to check the email for... Uh, <coughs> to activate the DLC. And yes. From Admiral Hackett. Commander Shepard. I'm ordering the Normandy into dry dock on the Citadel for much needed repairs. She's seen a lot of action lately, and she needs a little TLC. I have no idea what TLC is, but I'm sure one of you in the comments will, uh, will tell me. A small army of techs will take care of the details once you arrive, so let's get your crew out of here, out of there. You're all on shore leave, that's an order. We need everybody at their best. One more thing. Admiral Anderson has an apartment on the wards. Head, head over there when you arrive. I hear it's a nice place. Admiral Hackett. Oh, I like this. Uh, this, I am a sucker. F I need to. Okay, let me let me collect my thoughts a bit here. Collecting, collecting. Mm. I need things to make sense. And <clears throat> we're about to assault the Illusion Man space. So why would I head back to the Citadel? Because we need repairs. We need everyone at their top. Uh, if the Normandy isn't functioning properly, 
then we'll jeopardize everything. So, yeah, back to uh, to the Citadel to uh, take care of that. And look, I haven't found my space hamster. I know where it is. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, engineering. Uh, nope, wrong way. Tally, tally. Oh, tally. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming ah, it's by. No, no trouble. It's uh, probably the last time I'll run, a while, run around in the Normandy. <laughs> oh, I mean, if I'm, I'm this melancholy, is that the word? If I'm this sad now. <laughs> I wonder how it, it'll be at the end of the DLC. I don't know. I might surprise myself. I think the space hamster is around here somewhere. I've seen it in other LPS uh, videos. Come on, space hamster. Come on. Miniature giant space hamster. Well, I guess Alexander Shepard don't really have time to take care of a furry little thing anyway. So let's set off and get up to the CIC, wrong way, and head back to the Citadel. Hey, trainer. Commander. Trainer is the sweetest girl. I think the the uh, the people who play gay or lesbians really lucked out on that one. She's awesome. And here I am, close by too. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, something's wrong with the engine. Need to dry dock. Alright, Citadel, Doc. And so it begins, personal apartments. Oh, nice loading screen. Oh. Commander, I've got Admiral Anderson on the QEC, patching him through to you now. Ooh, they got trainers, voice actress in on this. Shepard. And? How are you holding up? Day by day, Commander. Yeah. Hackett sent me a message about this apartment. I want you to have it. Take it off my hands. Are you serious? You need a place that's yours. Somewhere to recharge. Clear your head. That's true. Kaylee wanted us to settle down there. Thing is, the longer I'm on Earth, the less I want to leave. And I want as few loose ends out there as possible. Like I said, you'd be doing me a favor. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, that's awesome. And I actually believe they have most of the voice actors in this game, if I recall uh, the interviews I've been reading. Uh, they came out very early. So, crossing my fingers to see more famous people, quote-unquote. That's very generous. It's practical. We need you in the best shape possible. Rested. Yeah. Focused. If you say so. Thank you. And make yourself at home, damn it. It's yours now. Thank you. I'm sure I can manage. Well, this is awesome. I want a place okay. like this. Good. Been meaning to do that for a while. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Be careful out there, Anderson. You too, Shepard. <clears throat> Explore apartment. All right. Oh, look at that. Well then, where to start? And again, makes sense. You want Shepard to be rested and uh, good to go as well. This is probably the last time he. Oh. That's. This is probably the last time he uh, has the uh, the time to. 
to relax. I better check this message before that ringing makes me insane. Oh, look at this. Where where is the message? Yeah, yes. I'm lost. No. Hello? Dinner at sushi place. This had to be Kasumi. Joker! <laughs> oh, well. Hey, Shepard. I got a few things I wanted to go over with you. With the Normandy in dry dock, I figured we could meet up at that Roussier. Roussier? Sushi place down in the wards. I hear it's the best. Joker. Nice. We'll do that. I like sushi. Let's see here. Uh, Really? I... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> really? I can do this? Okay, I'm doing this. Okay, betting. Oh, wait, I'm going to explore every everything first. <laughs> uh, uh, notes for Anderson biography. Listing. Oh, nice. Keith is such a great voice actor. I joined the military. Everyone talks about honor, duty, sure. But that's never the whole truth. It's a hundred little things that add up to commitment. I joined because of a dog. Yeah. A dog. This patchy mean son of a bitch that used to bark at me every day on my way to school. He'd snarl and I'd start running. Scared the hell out of me. I was just a kid. I remember being in a bad mood one morning. Angry, I can't recall why. When that dog started in on me, I snapped. Started barking right back. We both kept at it until we had nothing left. Dog never bothered me again. Why did I join the military? <clears throat> Sometimes you just gotta howl to make things right. That's an inter interesting concept. Uh, I'll take a quick break here, because I forgot to grab some water, as usual. But I'll be back very shortly. Alright, I'm back with a glass of water. Uh, that's actually a good advice to anyone who, uh, you know, thinking about starting LPing. Uh, have something to drink, because you are going to talk a lot, and your throat is going to run dry. Uh, don't drink... Uh, anything carbonized cause that'll uh, make you clear your throat all the time and uh, burp and all, all that stuff but a nice nice uh, clean uh, glass of water that's that's nice so yeah let's continue exploring this uh, apartment a few months ago I had a chance to sit down with one oh. <laughs> well, does the program make the man, or do you think you were born for this? It's a bit of both, 
I suppose. Every soldier reaches a point in their career, sometimes more than once, when they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could. That moment is the test. I've seen men and women, almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others, with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few. <laughs> none of which I'd like to share. But uh, I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's intuition? Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean... Do it's a really nice interview. Over your mind? <laughs> well, <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. The problem is... War isn't orderly. And the enemy is never predictable. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances, and there's more than I'd like to admit. Your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That, and the men and women you're fighting beside. But soldiers are only as good as their leader, isn't that true? Yeah. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader, <laughs> well, war tends to make examples of them. What makes a good leader then? A good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission, but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission yeah. is higher than the cost of losing That's a That's a terrible line to have to walk. That's so true. But war is a terrible thing. Sometimes you have to make the hard decisions. That was awesome. Yeah, I was stranded on that asteroid, and I was the last one to run out of oxygen. Then again, I had lots of training, you know, being uh, the sole survivor of my uh, squad on uh, Akus. Tough times, tough times. I like how this, all of this here gives some depth to the uh, Anderson character. And again, I've said it before in uh, previous DLCs, I really envy the guys who get to play this before the end. Because I think, I think the attachment to Anderson, which is already, already great, will be even greater once you know you get uh, through all of this and experience uh, all of these interviews and notes. And yeah, it's going to be tough seeing him uh, go down in the uh, in the citadel Sif No no it's fine I got a few minutes First contact war Yeah I was there My first real combat First for a lot of us I remember one night early in the war strapped to my seat as our transport approached the LZ Everyone was dead silent Just the sound of breathing Good man I trained with all of them. We were always joking and horsing around, but not this time. Yeah, that was the war Just with the, the Turians. And that heavy breathing. Everyone was thinking the same thing. We're off to fight alien invaders. Aliens. Think about that. We all grew up wondering what was out there. If we were alone in the universe. Now we knew. We weren't alone. Fine, he said. Why? Because I heard your mama so ugly 
the Marines thought she was a Tory. <laughs> Yo mama jokes. These these little anecdotes are great. Yeah. You know, get to know the characters a little bit more. And you know Anderson already, but giving him this depth, I, I like it. Look at this. Oh, it's about me. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's see. Sure, I can talk about Commander Shepard. Big topic. There's been a lot written about the Commander, but most of it isn't true. People are quick to judge. They don't know the whole story. I don't even know the whole story, but I know the man. Worked with him. Fought with him. Trust him with my life. Shepard's had some rough patches. Who of us hasn't? He's been forced to fight a lot of battles alone. Yeah. God only knows how he got out of some of that. Make your head spin. Thing is, he never heard a complaint. Never once got, no sir, I can't do that. He never hesitated. Few people know what Shepard's been through. I'd like to think I come pretty close. And I worry sometimes he forgets. There's a whole bunch of people who lose sleep over him getting back home. Aww. Maybe it doesn't need to be said. Maybe we're too dumb to say it. Soldiers like the Commander are rare. Men like Shepard? Even more rare. Thank you, Anderson. Oh, you're such a great man. Normandy! Music? Oh no, they got pop in the music, pop in the future as well. No, turn it off! Turn it off! Oh god, that was close. Oh no, not hip hop! Kill it! What? Hmm. I don't know. Better? Okay. Right, well, let's just turn off the music for now. <clears throat> uh, oh, fireplace. And... More stereo controls. Interesting. Oh, more. Uh, oh, uh, Normandy. The Normandy? A brand new ship. My ship. You don't forget that moment. The first time you're standing there. The whole crew looking to you for direction. Unforgettable. I'd led men and women before that. Seen a lot of combat already. Always managed to find my way home in one piece. To do that a few times, you begin to think you know better than the next guy. Maybe you do, I don't know. But if you're lucky, really lucky, you find yourself on a good ship, in front of a good crew. Yeah. A crew you can trust with your life. Gifted. Disciplined. Brave. Like my All crew. Them, eager to set sail. Sounds very romantic. I still remember my exo asking what my orders were. Shepard, I said. Let's see what we can find. <laughs> yeah, I was exo back then. Exo Shepard. Relationships. Maybe this is about Kaylee Sanders and uh, David Anderson. You never asked me about this, but my wife just called. Oh. My Even about military and non-military. 
planetary demigods. Space flight. Space flight. Finding the mass relays, miracles of engineering. Human imagination rising to meet our desires. Mm. We pay a price for that curiosity, that drive. Our relationships suffer. People we love suffer. No. But that's reality. And it's worth the cost. I must have thought it was. I guess I still do. In the end, you just have to hope you made the right choices. Now I'm Tali. Yeah, Shepard had a thing for Liara once. Now they now they're just friends. But but Tali's is his, his, his true love. Oh, more more notes and seven embarrassing moment I've got more of those than anyone will ever know <laughs> only way to learn something but if I had to pick one to share I had just gotten promoted to n7 full of myself king of the castle found myself buying drinks for undesirables in some rundown bar in the wards they wanted <coughs> my recent promotion Hell, they would have toasted Batarian slavers if it had got them more drinks. Mm -hmm. About the time my money ran out, my new friends turned on me. I was outnumbered. Things didn't look good. My plan to get out of there involved lots of punching. Well, that worked <laughs> for a while. Then a table hit me. Or I oh no, so I'll flip the table on him. When I came to, I saw a Solarian putting the rest of the troublemakers down. A Solarian? Move like a damn cat, I swear. When everybody was out cold. Or running. He walked over and helped me up. N7, he asked. Yes, sir, I replied. He looked over my collection of unconscious friends, nodding. Not bad, human, he said. Then he walked away. I had met my first spectre. Oh. Learned an important lesson that day. No matter how good you think you are. There's always somebody quicker, faster, and a hell of a lot smarter than you just around the corner. I love these little that anecdotes. Me alive more than once since then. Yeah, don't underestimate your opponents. You know, you could Yeah, that's that's it. Don't underestimate your opponents. You can't do everything yourself. If you need help, get help. This is not some kind of pissing match. <laughs> you know, you have to have helps. Uh, friends to me to help you uh, when things get tough. And uh, what is this? Some kind of cybernetic super dog? Here, here, doggy. No, it's not a dog. I don't, I don't know. So, mm, not really my kind of art. This one is okay, I guess. What's this? Stereo again? I think I'm gonna leave that off for now. Okay, so Anderson's childhood. <clears throat> okay. So Tombstone leader. Admiral David Edward Anderson. Not sure why anybody would be interested, but thanks for asking. <laughs> um I was born in London, June eighth, twenty one thirty seven. The last of three children born to Ursula and Paul Anderson. A nurse and a flight mechanic, respectively. But that's a little dry. And someone's gonna spice this up, right? <laughs> Never been There's nothing wrong with being, being a nurse or... Anyway, where was I? Flight mechanic? It was a second marriage for my parents. They were almost 50 by the time they had me. My mother worked shifts. So my father would often take me to the base. While he worked, I watched transport ships and fighters take off. Worked his whole life around space travel, my father. He never left Earth. Huh. Not for a day. He was a good man. But that's just a side note. Don't put that in. Who is it, Kaylee? Oh, yes, I need to take that. I hope this is what you're after. Huh. I'll get to the more interesting N7 stuff next time. So, it was Kaylee. Uh, is this Kaylee recording these? Oh, maybe. Uh, Turian experience. Yeah, he was in the first contact war, so... The Turians? Hmm. Mm, well, I might not always see eye to eye with the politics of the individual. But I have a great 
great respect for the Torian military. Any Alliance soldier lucky enough to take part in their training programs will certainly be better for it. Their precision, skill, and discipline come together in a way that's second to none. Not that I'm faulting our own people or training. It's just that after fighting Torians in the first contact war, years later, I had the opportunity to observe and train on Palavan. It was a turning point for me. And I would encourage any soldier to try it. It's a unique experience to put yourself in the squad of a Turian commander. My commander was an uncompromising bastard named Bartok Sporax. <laughs> if you can find him, just ask how the platoon I commanded was trounced in his strategy game. Humbly. But I've used what I learned that day many times. The Xenophobes will have their say. But I think it's vital that we do more of this kind of cross-species... Yeah, we're not alone here. And if you do find General Oryx, let me know. I owe you money. <laughs> oh. Let's see. And yeah, it's good. He had, you know, he, he, he made mistakes in his life. Mistakes in his life. But as long as you learn from those mistakes, it's quite a good experience. You know, you have to make mistakes to 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 learn. Huh. Weapon bench, another weapon locker. Well, okay, so this is my bed now. It's a black bed. Nice. Oh! Whoa! Oh! Oh! Okay, enough imagining. Uh, let's uh, carry on. <clears throat> David, please. Focus. Uh, uh, what's in here? This is a huge apartment. Secondary bathroom. Oh, uh, normally... Uh, what, is this a secondary bedroom? Are you kidding with me? Do you have two bed... Holy... Wow, okay. This place is huge. It is. Okay, SR1, the Normandy. You asked me to talk about the SSV Normandy. The Normandy SR1. As commander of the Tokyo, I was consulted on the Normandy's design and on board for her initial training exercises. The average person probably doesn't know that the Normandy was a joint project with the Torians. I know, I know. Acting CEO, Eli Zander, was no diplomat. She ran out of patience with Torian posturing and politicking during construction. The chief architect of the Drive Corps, Octavio Tatum, and his team of Torian engineers were in the CIC for final training exercises. Tempers flared when Zander pushed the limits of the stealth system, waiting to vent the... Ah, yes, well past what Tatum was comfortable with. I tried to calm the situation, but it still ended with the Turian scientist in shackles and a human Turian fistfight at Cora's den later. Oh. Funny now, when I first laid eyes on the Normandy, she was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Yeah, it's a beautiful ship. The day after that training run, Admiral Wright found me on the bridge. <coughs> She's yours, he said. Can't trust her to Xander. Send me a list of crew from the Tokyo you'd like, and prep for your first mission. Short command, thanks to Saren. Still, yeah. one of the highlights of a long career. Uh, yeah. All of that, actually, I don't know why, but it made me... Oh, look at this, this is beautiful. Really nice. The ceiling might need some work, but otherwise it's really nice. I like the, uh, the dark wood. Yeah, I wonder how, how Shepard's mom is doing. I hope she's okay. Alright, I think uh, I think we're done here. Look at this! This is... Whoa, this is... Ooh. Look at this! Come on! This is awesome! What is this? Steer control, okay. So... What's the objective? How, how do I check the objective again? I know there's one, one of these keys here somewhere. Oh, meet Joker. Yeah, at the sushi bar, right. But you know what? Let's do that in the next set. If you've been watching, thank you, and I'll see you then.